Testing, testing. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. If you're thankful to be found in the house of the Lord, why don't you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> amen. We know that just because we turn on the lights, amen, just because we open up the doors does not mean that God shows up. But the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. I know it's a Wednesday night. I know there's just a few of us, but I've come expecting God to do some great things in this place today. Amen. Not to interrupt the spirit, but you may be seated. I just have two short announcements. Amen. Everybody, just a reminder, a lot of us already know. Everybody say this Friday. This Friday, there's going to be Good Friday service. Amen. If you're excited for Good Friday service, why don't you give a hand clap of praise. Amen. We're excited for Good Friday service. We're excited for Easter weekend. And, of course, Easter weekend. Easter is Sunday, uh, March 31st. It's crazy. It's already Easter. Uh, but invite a friend. Invite a guest. Um, I, I, I've been telling a, a several clients today and, and Monday, uh, and I've gotten a lot of no's, but, but that's all right. Amen. <laughs> we will, I, if, one, if one guest makes it, one of my clients makes it to the, the church on Friday or Sunday, amen, that's, that's good enough for me. Amen. If you could all stand, if, for the, if the ushers could make their way, amen. If you're a first-time guest, amen, please do not feel obligated to give. This is just our way of giving back to how God has so richly uh, blessed us with. Amen. So why don't we do this? Why don't we go before the Lord in prayer for this tithe and offering? God, we love you in this service. God, we love you. We thank you, God, for your goodness and mercy. Lord, we, Lord, let us remember, God, touch this offering. God, touch this tithe. Touch this offering, God, for the work and purpose, God, of your kingdom today. God, touch this service today, God. Lord, we've come to pour out our praise to you today. We've come to declare your glory. God, we've come to declare your power. God, touch this Wednesday night. Touch, touch the preach the preacher as he preaches, God, your word today, God. We give you praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. You may march at the direction of your usher. There's honey in the rock, water in the stone, manna on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know everything I need, you've got. There's honey in the
How sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus. Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus. Come on, if you know that it's so sweet to trust in the mighty name of Jesus, that anything that you need, he's going to provide. He is always on time. He's a promise keeper. His word does not fail. It goes forth and it will accomplish everything he set out for it to accomplish. Oh, so somebody could just encourage themselves tonight. Hallelujah.
your thoughts, your plans for me are good. I know you hold my future and my hope. Your promises never fail. Your promises never fail. Your promises never fail. Your promises never fail. Come on, if we can just give him some praise right now. Praise in the waiting. Praise when that door is not open yet. And keep praying, keep believing, keep pursuing, keep following. So don't grow weary, keep believing. Cause in due season, you're gonna see it. Don't give up, don't you ever give up. Cause there's no way he could let you down. So keep your head up, knees to the ground. Oh, don't give up, don't you ever give up. So don't grow weary, don't grow weary. Keep believing, for in due season, you're gonna see it. Don't give up. Don't you ever don't you ever give up and there's no way there's no way he can let you down so keep your head up knees to the ground don't give up don't you ever give up don't go weary don't go weary keep believing for when you see that you're gonna see it don't give up don't you ever give up don't you ever give up Cause there's no you down so keep your head and knees to the ground don't give up don't you ever 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 give up don't give up don't give up don't give up don't you ever give up don't give up don't you ever give up keeper thank you for always standing on your word that it doesn't return void that it does accomplish what you've sent it out to accomplish and that we are living proof that there are miracles that there are testimonies in this room of what you can do of what holding on of what being patient of what waiting can do thank you god for the testimonies that are in this room Burden. Yes. 
you down So keep your head up Knees to the ground Don't give up Don't you ever give don't up Don't you ever give up Say don't grow weary Don't grow weary Keep believing For the two seasons You're gonna, You're gonna say it. it Don't give up Don't you ever give up There's no way There's no way He can let you down So keep your head up Knees to the ground, don't give up. Don't you ever give up. We are living through. What holding on can do, we're living through. We are living through. What holding on can do. Come on, aren't you thankful for that testimony that you have in Jesus today? God, I thank you, Lord, for those days I became weary, Lord. I kept believing, and I kept holding on to you, Lord Jesus. Come on, aren't you thankful for that testimony? If you're thankful, put your hands together for the Lord one more time today. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Aren't you thankful to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. We've got a special request today. Sister uh, Libby is requesting prayer for her dad. He is in the hospital right now. So if we could, as a church, if we could just lift our hands in prayer right now and call on Libby's dad right now for an emergency prayer for her dad. Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord, you're our healer. God, you can do it, Lord. You said by your stripes we are healed. And God, I believe that today in Jesus' name. God, with you, Lord, all things are possible. Lord, touch your dad right now, Lord. God, bring healing to his body today, Lord, in Jesus' name. God, we're bringing this need unto you, Lord. God, you can move right into that hospital room. God, you can make a way right now, Jesus. God, sweep into that place, Lord. Bring peace, Lord. Bring healing. God, bring comfort to that place, Lord, because you are wonderful. God, you're our counselor, Lord. You're the mighty God. Lord, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, Lord. If you did it before, God, you can do it again today. In Jesus' name, because you are the mighty God. You are the everlasting Father. Lord, you are the Prince of Peace. God, have your way in that room right now, Lord, in Jesus' name. God, we look forward to the testimony, Lord, of your blessing. God, of your blessing, Lord, of your help today, Lord, of your healing touch, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If you believe the Lord can do it one more time, put your hands together for the Lord and thank him today. Let's just take a minute and glorify the Lord and praise him. Come on, clap your hands unto the Lord. Lift your voice unto the Lord. He loves you today. Hallelujah. If you need a blessing, you need restoration, you need healing, you need comfort, whatever it is, the Lord is here today. And he can bless you and help you in a special way. In Jesus' name. In Jesus. One more time, let's put our hands together for the Lord. He is forever faithful and good. Amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You can find your way back to your seats today. Amen. God is good. God is good. We were in class on Sunday morning, and uh, we had 
a lot of prayer requests. And I said, there is no way I'm going to remember every one of these requests. But it's important to bring them before the body of Christ, and it's important for us to bring them before the Lord because he can hear every request that you have. So anytime you bring it unto the Lord, say, Lord, I have this need. He's the one that can heal. He's the one that can bless. We can bring it to the church to pray about it, but the Lord in the end is going to be the one making a way. Amen. Amen. God is good. God is good. We have a great uh, man's going to be preaching tonight. So very thankful for Brother Traxon and his years of ministry. So very thankful for him. If he'd make his way up today, I'm so very thankful for the word of God and how it can encourage and bless your soul. Let's give him a hand as he comes today. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everyone. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. He said, preach, I come to teach today for a few minutes anyway, thanking God for his goodness and mercy. Uh, it's always an honor to be asked to share the word of God. And I love to do that. I, I love the word of God. I realize that the words that I speak, their spirit in their life. Um. Their spirit, the word of God is spirit. And with knowing that, uh, I, I, it, it floods through my soul. Just the, the word of God floods through my soul. I can lay there. It, I tell my wife, <laughs> I have got to get up. Because if I'm laying there and I get a thought and I can't roll away from it, I'm done. That rhema... Uh, it goes from one scripture to another scripture to another scripture. You, knew, you folks know what I'm talking about. You know that uh, how the word of God works in our life. Well, <clears throat> the, I, as I was thinking about what, where we're living in today, and there's just all kinds of speculation. There's all kinds of things going on in the world today. People are they're, they're disturbed with not knowing uh, what's going to go on the wars, the rumors of wars, but also the signs and the wonders that are getting ready to take place and are taking place within the next two weeks. If you haven't listened to Brother Jeff Moses on the eclipse and all the things that are happening, it's more than speculation. God is going to do something and it's going to be April the 8th. Now, I, I put a name out there that he, he did it. Uh, at his church, but uh, it, it behooves every one of us to, it, these things that are getting ready to happen, I have been sending uh, Brother Moses uh, texts and, and his messages out to people that have drawn cold, people that I've gone to work with. They've got back and sent back to me and said, thank you for thinking of me, and yes, I, I want to draw closer to the Lord. And I use the things that are happening happening in this day and time as, as opportunities to witness to people. Hey, what about this? And I hand them a card. Have you thought about this? Or, what, what are you doing with your life? Do you know that the Lord is coming? I'm not embarrassed or ashamed to tell people the world is in terror. They're scared to death. They're looking over at Israel. We knew the last hope for Israel was the United States. We knew that somehow before the Lord could come back, that the whole world was going to turn their back on Israel. And so people are upset about that. They're upset about the, the red heifers that are over there. They're upset with uh, uh, Russia and China and all of the things that are going on. The, these are times for us not to worry. Our, we're, we're supposed to look up for our de redemption draweth nigh. We understand that these things got to happen. We're, we're not going to fear like other people fear. Amen. We're going to rejoice because we have a hope, because we've been born again of the water and the spirit. We feel the presence of the Lord in us. And so church, just keep steady the course. The Lord knows those that are his and he knows what he's doing. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Well, uh, I'd like to turn to Isaiah, the ninth chapter. I'm going to read two verses today. 
the ninth chapter of Isaiah, the 23rd and the 24th verse. I'm going to read them and let you sit down then. <clears throat> but in Jeremiah, the ninth chapter, the 23rd verse says, Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. You may be seated. I came across this scripture because I've, I've been going back over scriptures that I used to know very well and have gotten rusty on them. So I'm, I was trying to hone in, and I can quote uh, 9, 23, and 24. But, uh, you know, when you, when you look at that, it says, <clears throat> Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. That's the first portion that I like to talk about. And I did a really quick, uh, I carry a computer with me everywhere I go. And uh, some of you do the same. I don't know how to work it a lot of times, like right now. Well, come here, Brother Wade. I don't, I don't want to take a picture. I just I took a picture of something here. Let me see a picture. Mm-hmm. Is the Holy Ghost moving yet? Hey, yeah. Okay, I, I'll just do it by off the top of my head. That's okay. <sighs> no, I don't need it. <clears throat> well, what it said was that I, when I ran a, a, a search on knowledge, they were talking about the 19th, up to the 19th uh, century that uh, knowledge would inc- double every 100 years. Then by 1950, it was doubling uh, every 10 years. Now it's doubling every six months. Okay. One cannot undermine the knowledge doubling curve. It dictates the following. Until year 1900, human knowledge approximately doubled every century. By 1950, however, human knowledge doubled every 25 years. By 2000, human knowledge would double every year. Today, our knowledge is doubling almost every day. And then I read another uh, article underneath there that it says that every 12 hours, every 12 hours. So they were saying, if you're going to college and you're studying for a career in something, it's going to be obsolete by the time you graduate. They're not even going to be talking about the same thing. So as we're looking at, 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 at how this is doubling, uh, that, that if you go to college, you're not even going to be ready for whatever's going to happen because it's going to change so much. But as uh, we, we know that this AI, this artificial intelligence has come on the scene. And it's a method in which a computer is able to act on the data through statistical analysts enabling them to listen to your voice, to answer the questions that you have. In fact, is if you rate it poorly, it has the ability to go back and find out what you didn't like about the conversation and fix it so that it would be better the next time. I mean, it's just, it, it, it's, it's mind-boggling. When you're in your car and you want to go somewhere, you put up the GPS. We've been using it for a long time. You want direction. You want weather. You want... Uh, reminders, you want lists, whatever you want. I feel stupid when I realize just how little I understand the intellect of this world. How can I function and live in this environment? First Corinthians, the first chapter, and I've got a reader today. You stay with me, I'm going to read a few scriptures. A few hundred, and then we're going to be gone. First Corinthians, the first chapter, the 17th verse through the 24th verse. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, 
Not with words of wisdom, lest the cross of Christ should be made okay. of none effect. He said, listen, I, I, I come not with words of men's wisdom. I, I, I don't want to wow and dow you. You know, some people get up there and they just, they can say everything perfect and they don't stumble over anything and it's just as beautiful. And when they get done, you don't have any more than when they begin to read. But we have wisdom from another source. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Go ahead. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Listen. The Bible said that he came to the common people. That's me. I'm just a common old person. But one day I ran in to the truth. I had a father and a mother that lived it in front of us. I heard them praying. They convinced me just by the life that they lived that this was the way. I'm so grateful for parents. Even as I was praying this morning, I said, God, thank you for a mother and father that lived it in front of me that I saw, that I was persuaded. My wife and I would often, she, we would talk, and she said, do you think we would have chosen this way had we not been born into it? What a thought. Think about, would we have really chose this if we hadn't been, been raised into this? But the Bible said this is what he's going to do with wisdom. It's, he's gonna, the, the wisdom of this world is the foolish. The foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom. So uh, then I'd like to go, so the world by wisdom didn't know God. So I checked off wisdom off the list. And then I went back to Jeremiah 9, 23. The Bible said, neither the mighty man glory in his might. 1 Samuel 17, 45 says, have you got it there, bro? Uh-huh, 45. Yes, sir. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, and all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. In the 47th verse. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. I'll tell you what. The Bible says about the mighty man. Don't let him glory in his might, in his strength. You look at Solomon, you look at, at Goliath, you look at, uh, you look at these men, and they, and they didn't give God the glory. Solomon didn't give God, I mean, I'm sorry, Samson didn't give uh, God the glory. He used it for his own way of living. Goliath, he was sure. I, I wrote down some things that I looked up that the coat of mail that he wore was 126 pounds. He stood nine foot tall. He had a spearhead that weighed, weighed 15 pounds. I, I don't know how big his shield was, and he had an armor bearer in front of him. He was, he was a mighty man of warrior. There was no way of getting around it. I'd let David go out there. Uh, I would pray for him. I would uplift him. I would sing. I would do whatever I could. But I want David. I, I don't know that I could be that brave to go up there. But the Bible said, let not the mighty man glory in his might. And then we, as we see that uh, the mighty man, it's the, 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 the strength and the might that we need. And so many times we can rely on the Lord when we have no place else to go. When we have nowhere else to turn to, we've got to breathe on. I ask God, God, send your mighty angel today to Sister Libby's uh, father, wherever he is, down the hall, into the room. And I'm thanking you ahead of time because you always hear. I want you to know the Lord always hears your request. The Lord always hears your request. It's not by your money. It's not by your strength, but it's by his spirit, saith the Lord. So I marked off the mighty. It's not going to be by the mighty man. And then the last one, the Bible talks about, uh, read Jeremiah 23. Uh, okay. The Bible says that he said the wisdom, the mighty and the rich. Now we're going to talk about the rich man for a moment. 
And uh, the rich man, don't let him glory in his riches. Uh, And the scripture said, if God has blessed you and you're in the body of Christ, it's because you've made Jesus your greatest possession. If you have money today and you're in the house of the Lord, it's because you have turned your life over. You've turned your wallet over. You've turned everything that you have. In him we live and move and have our being. That's where we get our strength. That's where we get our direction. That's where we get our church. That's where we get our purpose is in him. And if you're fortunate enough to have a few dollars, if you're fortunate enough to be wealthy, we can look here in the Bible said in Zechariah 4 and 6, Uh, Can you read that for me? Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Psalms 50 and 10 says that he owns the cattle on a thousand hill, and he owns the hills under the cattle. Just stay with me. I think I know where I'm going. God created the heavens and the earth. He stood up on the, uh, on the precipice of nothing and spoke the worlds into existence. Do you think he's rich? <laughs> he, he owns all the gold and all the silver belong to the Lord. Amen. And so we, we understand it's, it's not by wisdom and it's not by might <clears throat> and it's not by riches. The Bible said, but if any man will glory, let him glory in this, that he knoweth me. Now, let's read that again. Jeremiah 9 and 24 is what I want now. Jeremiah 9, 24. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Could you leave that up there for me? Don't, don't take that off. The Bible said, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness. If we're going to glory of, about anything, it's that we know the Lord. Amen. The Lord knows me and I know the Lord. And that's what we're going to glory in. He said, let let him that glorieth glory in this. And not in your might, not in your money, not in your strength, but glory in the fact that we know the Lord. I, I'll tell you, church, we are blessed today. When we see everything that's getting ready to happen, we have a refuge. We have a God that understands and knows what we're going through. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll tell you, folks, that word of God, you can't do better than in the morning. Get that word of God out and begin to study a little bit. Let the word of God talk to you. Let it begin to speak to you. He said, but let him that glory, glory in this. The Bible said that we are new creatures in Christ Jesus. As I begin to study this, I I begin to look at that, and I I, I realize that he said that uh, he's the, you know, but, but let him that glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me that I am the Lord which exercise. Now, I don't know. Uh, exercise and me haven't been getting along real good. I've gone probably to the gym a couple, three times this month, and, and I need to go every day. But the Lord exercises. Uh, you know, I, I got to looking at this, and he exercises loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness. The Bible said the, love, the first one was loving kindness, The loving kindness, the Bible says that with loving kindness, thou hast drawn me. He drew us when we were unlovable, when there was nothing good about us. The loving kindness of God reached out and began to woo us and began to pull us. I remember when I worked at General Motors, uh, Brother Sherman Williams was working on the line, and I happened to be an electrician, and I got to walk around and drive around, and he told me later, he said, Brother Traxa, you'd come by and look at me, and I knew you were reading my mail. I knew you could look through me. Listen, folks, I want you to know that the people, your neighbors, the ones you work with, they need what you have. You have what they need, and you wonder, will they ever respond? Whether they respond or not, Reach out to them and give them a testimony. Talk to them. Say hello. Be kind to them. So with loving kindness, the Lord drew us. I don't know if you were sick. 
and God got your attention that way. I don't know if it was because you were going to school with somebody and they lived the life or you went to work with them. Uh, I remember, and I said this, I think the last time when the very first year that I started working at General Motors, I started a Bible study. Why? Because I knew it was the right thing. I knew that I needed to start a, a Bible study because the people that I met, I was going to stand in front of them one day and give an account. They used to sing a song, you never mentioned Jesus to me. Anybody ever heard that? You never mentioned Jesus to me. You help me not the light to see. You met me day by day. And you knew I was astray, still you never mentioned Jesus to me. You know, people say, Brother Traxel, you just talk, talk, talk about the Lord all the time. Talk, talk, talk. I'm hoping it sticks to somebody. I want them to know that I've got a pure heart, that I've got a prayer life, that I've got a Holy Ghost inside of me. I want to, what else do you want to talk about except the Word of God? Those are the only things. And I'm going to tell you something. When you're dealing with people that are brand new, there's nothing that will make you live greater for God than when you're reaching for somebody. You're careful about, your, about what you say. You're careful about what you do. You're careful about how you dress. You're careful about what you go. Why? Because a baby's watching you. Somebody's got their eye on you. And you know what the Bible said? You'll not only save your, them, you're going to save yourself by reaching for them. My goodness, you get yourself a chart underneath your, your arm and you begin to go into people's homes and you begin to talk to them. There are great, wonderful experiences that are waiting. You don't have to read other people's experiences. God will give you your own experiences if you're willing to step out. You may flumble like I do when I get behind the pulpit, but you know what? You let the anointing power of the Holy Ghost hit me when I'm sitting across the table from somebody. They could be smoking a, a cigarette or drinking a beer, but I could see the Word of God go in them. I, and what a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful blessing it is that when you can go up here and you can see somebody after they've repented of their sins, been water baptized in Jesus' name because the efforts that you've made. Uh, you know what? Maybe you fulfilled your role in playing music or singing or Sunday school teaching, but the Lord expects every one of us to be soul winners. He expects every one of us to be soul winners. But let him that glory, glory in this that he understandeth. Oh, my goodness. What is it after you were lost and you came and, and the scales fell off your eyes and you begin to realize that you were lost? I remember Brother Brad Smith saying he was in church two years before he even 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 touched his mind about the oneness of God. He, uh, you know, he may not remember that, but it, it stuck with me. But you know what? He kept coming. He kept coming. He kept coming. And that's what you've got to do. You've got to make up your mind. I'm in this to the very end. I'm in this to the very end. And when you begin to understand the purpose of God in your life, when you begin to really grow up and you understand, let me tell you something. Grown-up people have babies. Grown-up people have babies. In, 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 the, in the perfect world of, of the Lord, it's a husband and wife. After they're married, the Lord blesses them with children because if you're alive, you multiply. You understand? It's the same way in the spiritual realm. We can think that we're somebody or we can think that uh, it's not my obligation or my responsibility or the pastor's church. It's all of our responsibilities because your pastor is not living next to your neighbor. Your pastor doesn't go to work with the person you go to work with. If they're going to have any hope, you're the only Bible they're going to read, the only hope that you have. Uh, I, I, I probably told this, but it, it bears uh, repeating again. There was a gentleman at work. I call him gentleman. He went over to one of the men in our church and said, yeah, that guy, that Steve there, I hate his guts. I, can't, I had never talked to Larry, Meredith, uh, Larry Emrith ever in my life. I never said nothing. He always smiled. Hello. I was working with Dave Hills, and Dave Hills said, what did you do to him? I said, what are you talking about? I've never spoke to him. He said, he hates your guts. He, uh, uh, but do you think that's going to stop me from loving people? you think that's going to stop me from walking with the Lord? Do you think that's going to stop and give me a bad attitude? Do you not know that I understand the plan of God. Do you not understand? know that I understand what the devil wants to defeat you and make you feel uh, discouraged and down and somebody don't like you? My goodness, I just put on my coat of mail. I smiled. Four years later, four years later, he came up to me and he said, uh, Steve, uh, 
my wife's got cancer. Would you pray for my wife? Would you? It may, it may take four years. It may take three years. I don't know how long it takes. I, one time, I, and, and I, I'm not boasting on me. I'm talking about living and overcoming life in front of people at General Motors. I remember one day I was driving down, and a man stepped out in front of me and stopped, uh, a, a handsome young black man. And he said, hey, I just want to tell you something. I didn't know who he was. Don't know that I ever spoke to him. He said, I want, I want you to know that I became a Christian because of you. I said, what do you mean? He said, I just saw you taking your Bible, and you'd go up that steps, and all these men would follow you and go up the steps, and you had Bibles. And I knew there had to be something. I wasn't raised in a church, in a family that had church. My mom and dad didn't go to church, but because of the life that you lived, what do you think that did to me? That said, you know what? I'm going to keep on doing what I'm doing. Amen. I want to have fruit to lay at his feet. I, you understand what I'm talking about? I understand now what my responsibilities are. I don't know if I can tell this or not. I'm going to try. <clears throat> What's the youngest ones? We, all the young ones out? My grandfather had a church. He was 40 years old. He got saved when he was 40 years old. And two years later, he started a church downtown Akron, a storefront, a storefront church. <clears throat> and uh, it, it was named the church where the fire falls. And I mean, they had all kinds of them. There was a lady that was a street walker, came in, repented, got baptized and, and filled with the Holy Ghost and started bringing people in. And she just, oh, she would just get up and give the, all kinds of tests. One day she ran in, and maybe I told you this, but I'm 71 years old, so I'm going to repeat myself a couple of times. She ran into the church and said, I smell Jesus. I smell Jesus. And my grandpa looked at her and said, well, what's he smell like? He said, he smells like the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. <laughs> All kinds of, you know, but my grandpa stepped out. But they had a, they had a, a man and a woman in his church, and uh, they wanted to get married. My grandpa married them. A week went by, at two, two weeks. I hope I'm not going to get in trouble here, pastor. <clears throat> two weeks went by, and there was no joy at all in their face. And so my grandpa got him aside, and he knew nothing. He knew nothing about intimacy. And my grandma got the woman across. She didn't know anything about intimacy. And so my grandma filled her in, and my grandpa filled him in. And guess what, folks? The honeymoon was on. The honeymoon was on. The normal, uh, the, the normal actions between a husband and wife were consummated. Listen, do you understand why God filled you with the Holy Ghost? Do you understand? Do you have the knowledge to know that when you really grow up in Christ, you're going to be, begin to reach for people that are lost? They're lost just like you were lost. One day you were lost. Oh, my goodness. And I understand my responsibility is to reach everybody that I can, everybody that I can. If, I, if they open the door. Now, I'm not like I used to be. <laughs> I, I kind of try, try to wait until somebody um, says something that will give me the green light. And I'll feel like it's the Lord that wants me to talk to them. And I've had some wonderful, wonderful uh, experiences of people coming in and repenting of their sins and being baptized in the lovely name of Jesus. He said, loving kindness. And then he said, knoweth me that I am the Lord which exercise. Where does he, ex what's he, you know, if you want to get in shape, uh, you go down in the basement <clears throat> with Brother Mitch and you exercise. You, you, or you go to a gym. Hopefully you can get one where they they don't, uh, they're just not showing themselves off. But the Lord exercises in loving kindness. He loves to reach for the lost. But the only way that he can reach is he needs somebody with fleshly hands. He needs somebody that's got a mouth that can speak to them. The Bible said, make my mouth as a pen of a ready writer. Lord, I want to be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh me of the hope that lies within me. I've got a responsibility. So he's exercising, but he can only exercise through the flesh that he left in this earth. He came down, God Almighty, God in flesh, died, laid down the, the, the flesh, went down into hell, came back up, picked up the body and, and left us, but he sent back his spirit. We have the mind of Christ. 
What was the mind of Christ? The Bible said that he came to seek and to save those that were lost. He said, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Amen. For this cause came I into the world. He was going to give his life a ransom for many. Listen, our life is not going to be very long. It's not very long. Sister Ida and I were saying, man, how, how do we get this old this quick? It, it, it really did. You, I've heard that all my life. I heard old people saying that. And now I'm the old person that's saying that. But it's soon going to be over. I don't know what's getting ready to happen. I don't know what kind of judgment is coming on America because we're telling them to divide God's land. We want you to divide the land, God, that you gave. We know we're smarter than you, Lord. You know what? They don't understand God. What God says, he means. But I want to show you something else here. He said, exercise loving kindness. So when he reached for you with loving kindness, when he brought you into the church, when he let you cross paths with someone, uh, that, that, and they witnessed to you, and something happened to you, and it was actually God using that person with loving kindness, and he brought you to judgment. Judgment happened in your life, whether you knew it or not. You came to a door. And someone said, you know what you need to do? My mother was 13 years old. And uh, this young man, the first time my mother was at the church, he said, do you see this? Do you see that Acts 238 says you need to repent of your sins and be water baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost? Don't you want to be baptized in Jesus' name? 13 said, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, 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 want, to, I want to be baptized. And she made the right choice there. You know, Judgment comes by the choices that we make. Judgment comes by the choices we make. He says, and if you make the right choice, there's going to be loving kindness following you. There's going to be righteousness. You're going to be buried in the name of Jesus and wash away all of your sins. And then he promised to fill us with the Holy Ghost. Now, I've got something. That I said all of that to get down to this last little piece here. And this is what I want to tell you. <clears throat> said he exercises himself, the body of Christ exercises in loving kindness, reaching everybody that we can, bringing them to a point of judgment, whether you know what you're doing or not. Listen, you're holding people, not only your own soul, you're holding other people's souls in your hands. You're bringing them. So when you present Christ, you do the very best that you can. You don't add to, you just tell them exactly what the Word of God says. You spend time with them, let them fall in love with you, and, and, and let them realize that you're really real. And when calamity's going to come, because calamity comes to all of us. Rich or poor, it rains on the just as well as the unjust. We all have bad days. We all have good days. But when they have bad days, they don't have a refuge to run to. We have a God in heaven that loves us so much. He said, I'd never leave you nor forsake you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Those are things that we can count on, that we can stand on. For in these things I delight. The Lord delights in what? Loving kindness judgment and righteousness because that depicts the new birth loving kindness he he drew us with loving kindness the bible says he drew us and then we came to the point where we could say yes I'm going to accept this. Yes, I'm going to repent of my sins. Yes, Lord, I need a Savior. I don't know everything. I don't understand everything. But yes, Lord, I just know in my heart there's something that I need that can't be fulfilled any other way. I'm going to be obedient because the Word of God says it. And whether you know it or not, the Word of God is the Spirit of God. I tell people all the time, you want to hug Jesus, hug your Word. Hug the Bible. Amen. And then if you made the right decision, you get the righteousness of Christ. You put on, we're new creatures. In him we live and move and have our being now. How would you feel? We're getting ready to have an election for the president. The president has the authority to pardon people. Wouldn't it be something for you to walk around with people's pardons in your pocket and you never handed them out? Wouldn't it be something if you met people every day, you in the grocery store? Could you ever be so kind? Our pastor, God bless him, always tells us to really tip the waitresses and the waiters. Really take care of, of those that do work for us. Why? Because it's giving a testimony 
It's saying something. But for us to walk around with people's pardons in our pockets, knowing, knowing that the loving kindness could be used by us, if we would extend ourselves, if we would reach out to somebody that God would help us reach them and bring them to the point, what a terrible thing that you never ever brought your neighbor lived with him by next to him 40 years and never talked to him about the Lord. Never, you don't want to get embarrassed. You just want to live the life in front of them and let them see. You know, you know, if they're really hungry, they'll come. No, 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 no. You don't know how many nights they've laid in their bed and filled their ears full of hot tears because they had no hope. They didn't know what they were going to do. I remember a story, and I, I, I think it was David Bowen that was talking. He said that <clears throat> one day he got up or he told the story. I'm not sure, but this is what really happened. <clears throat> Singers, you can come. This is what happened. He said, this person went down to get a drink of cold milk at one o'clock in the morning. Was it David Bowen? He went down <clears throat> and uh, he, he took a drink and the Lord said, go out on your porch and sing power, power, wonder working power. And he said, what? He said, but he knew the voice of the Lord. So he went out there on the porch. He said, there's power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. And he came in, and when he stepped in, the Lord said, go out and do it louder. And David said, you want loud? There's power. In the blood of the Lamb, there's power, power, wonder-working power. In the precious blood of the Lamb. And he thought, well, I hope that pleased him. And he got in and went back to bed. Nine o'clock the next morning, somebody taps on, knocks on his door. He said, sir, were you singing out loud one o'clock in the morning about power, power, wonder-working Yep, that was me. He said, well, sir, I want you to know that I had a gun to my head and I was getting ready to blow my brains out. And I heard you sing and there's power, power, wonder working power. I wonder what it would be like if we would be willing to step out of our comfort zone, feel after the presence of God because he said he would lead you and guide you. We need to be led by, we need to live close enough that we can hear the voice of God when he speaks, this person needs it. This person, go to this person, do this, give that person money. You understand? That's our obligation and responsibility. We understand the loving kindness because he drew us. We understand the judgment because we've already, what are we going to do when we stand up before God be judged again. We're being judged every day. The Bible said we judge all everybody. Listen, the scripture tells you, and I, I won't go to it, but it says we judge everyone, but of them we're not judged. Why? Because we see God differently than they see him. We've already been judged. We came through the judgment seat. Now what's happening? We're oh, that person needs the Holy Ghost. Not you, James. But th that person needs the Holy That person needs the, you understand? So we have that in our grasp. We have that in our power now to reach out. Why don't you be a fool for Christ? Why don't you step out and say, Lord, I don't know if this is you or not, but Lord, if it is or if it isn't, I'm going to do this just because it could be. It could be. I don't want it to be past me by. Don't pass me by, Lord. If you want to use anyone, you can use me. Are we willing to do that today? Let's stand to our feet. Are we willing to say, Lord, I, 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 I'm, I'll do anything, God. We tell him that, and then we can't even, we can't even share the word. It, it, would it be embarrassing to you to take your Bible to work? Would it be embarrassing to take it to Panera and sit there and open it up and read it a little bit? Do you feel your obligation is already fulfilled because you come to church and you're faithful and you pay your tithes and, and, and you sing and you come to the altar? Or do you realize that when you really grow up, you begin to produce children? That's our obligation. God, lead me to somebody 
somebody that's hungry. Folks, you think that I'll talk to them? You think I'll tell them? I'll tell them everything that I know. I'll pray with them. I'll give them money. I'll do anything I can to make a difference in their life because I realize I can't do nothing about what's getting ready to happen. Uh, When prophecy comes forth, I can't stop prophecy, but I'll tell you what I can do. I can tell somebody about Jesus. I can tell somebody that they need to repent of their sins and be water baptized and be filled with the Holy Ghost. I can do that. So can you. That's why we're here. We're here to reach the lost. My goodness, I don't need a pulpit. I just need a kitchen table and a Bible and a hungry heart, and I go to town. Amen. Amen. Let's sing. Come, church. Let's just come and talk to the Lord. Let him speak to you today. Rejoice in the fact that you know his loving kindness, his judgment, and his righteousness. Hallelujah.